Good morning, Mr. B here. It is Saturday, February 24th, almost a little over 30 years of the man that I'm gonna be talking about today. And I've got my Sims hat on in tribute. I got some stuff stashed away, so. Yes, it's about Jeff Phillips, unfortunately. Uh, he was born on June 11th, 1963, and died on Christmas Day of 1993. And he had started, he spent some time in Asia before they came to Dallas, him and his family. Uh, and his dad had worked in the telecommunications like field. But he had started skating when he was 10 years old. Uh, his grandmother had given him uh, this shark skateboard that was made out of, I don't know, steel wheels? I can't imagine running on street with steel wheels. But he just took to it, you know, like a daggone duck to water and decided that's what he wanted to do. And, you know, school just kind of went out, 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 the, out the window. You know, I wish I had done which is kind of how it is. Like his first, uh, he started skating with a friend of his at Wizard Skate Park, which is in, uh, around the Dallas area. And, you know, just got like really into it, just like we all, all do, you know. It's all we want to do is just skate, 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 skate. Just punk rock, it's the big boys. So, he, Basically, his dad helped him build some skateboards uh, out of wood. <coughs> Excuse me. And then he just kind of went off from there. Like his first uh, early sponsors were uh, Gullwing. I think he, he stayed with Sim. I think Vision may have picked him up like later on. I'm not quite sure about that. That's the street where he But. Um, it was like GNS, Gullwing, he won his first contest as an AM at Kona, which is in Jacksonville, Florida. Skate park that's still there. It's probably one of the oldest skate parks, like con the concrete like oriented, that are still in existence. And then he placed third at the 1996 uh, contest they had at that Kahuna ramp, the old red ramp. Uh, super hands booster. that's in the video just a beast of a ramp it's, it's metal just just mad vert just crazy so 1986 he was at Mount Trashmore and he won that contest Head, it, it was a jam format. It wasn't like head to head like they they did it uh, against Tony Hawk. And allegedly he was on <laughs> he was on mushrooms the whole time. Or no, excuse me, he was on acid. You know, I don't want to besmirch his name or anything, but.
um, he was known to like to indulge, you know, a little bit of whatever when he was skating and everything. That's cool, you know, whatever you're down with, you know, this is, the channel's kind of about recovery, so, you know, I, I still don't make any judgments about people. But he absolutely tore that ramp apart, and he deserved it. I was there. I saw it, and it was it was just amazing. And a friend of mine supplied me with some photos of a ramp we used to go to in Raleigh called Barn Ramp. Uh, and a tracker crew, Dan Wilkes, a couple other guys, they came through, and I was able to get some photos from him of Jeff skating that ramp. And they're they're good. I'm gonna post them up. So time goes on, you know, Jeff skating and he had met uh, Allison Young, um, his girlfriend. Uh, I would imagine he met her when he was 20, he died when he was 30. So he met her in 83 maybe and stayed with her uh, up until uh, that fatal day or whatever it was. But, you know, it was amazing, like how how much of a power skater he was. I mean, it was he, he could do like an invert. You know, it, it's very rarely you're able to see somebody do an invert come off of. And he was six foot two, so he's lanky and everything. So he is able to do an invert come off, and then do like a head high method on the other wall. I mean, just unbelievable, like power. That he had, you know, and he was, you know, clicked up with the, the Texas crowd, John Tex Gibson, uh, Craig Johnson. All those guys, he spent a lot of time at the uh, clown ramp. Uh, I had some friends that lived out there at the time. Um, I'm not sure if. If Jeff was, was, I'm sure that they, they saw him. Really good. Uh, but they skated the clown ramp. Um, and he did a lot of skating out there. Uh, and then he, after this, this, you know, he had a pretty successful career because he was making about 70000 a year. Like in board sales, everything else that people make their money in, merch ads um a lot of good photographs are, are out there uh of jeff um and it's just amazing because he came up with the phillips 66 which was a elgarial a, a reverse elgarial if you will he credits it to sean pay uh, uh, an earlier skater but it, it's a it's a front side 360 handle so it would be a reverse elgarial is what they do. There are only two people I've seen being able to even try to wire them. I mean, I I tried like once or twice. I couldn't get. I couldn't even. I couldn't even turn. Them. But Joe Johnson could do them, and John Fadella of Virginia Beach could do them. Those are the only two people I've ever seen being able to do it. And he would just just you know do a fakey rock and roll, come back, and flip one over. Sometimes he would do a half one and come back. You know, he was doing frontside hang-ups, board slides before the lip trick thing like happened. Just, just power. Just, just unbelievable power. But, you know, and it, he had entered into, he had saved a lot of his money, uh, put him in uh, direct, uh, excuse me, certificate, uh, certificates of deposit to save up because he wanted his own skate park. 
So he opened the uh, Jeff Phillips Skate Park in the early 90s, and by 93, it was not doing financially well. Again, it's that vert thing, you know, the, the street skating thing had, uh, had taken off, and, and you know, like Tony Hawk has said, Bird is dead, and he was quoting as saying, you know, he had just started a family, and he understood where Jeff was coming from, and Jeff had gotten into guns, he had gotten into, you know, he had collected, collected reptiles, like he had snakes, iguanas, and stuff in, in, his, uh, in his house and aquariums, and somewhere along the line, like I guess his girlfriend decided to move out and on Christmas Eve I think he had gone no nobody says that he had shown any signs of depression Craig Johnson said that he was just the same old guy John Gibson just nobody saw it coming so again you know mental health please you know if, if you're I'm not a licensed practitioner again if you're having mental issues, substance abuse problems, please contact your medical uh, provider and get help. We don't want this kind of thing to happen. So he started collecting guns and he had had the stuff, you know, in his, in his place and his girl moved out. So maybe it just left him like absolutely despondent. You know, I mean, I've been there. I know what it's like. You know, you, you're, there are times when you're just like, I don't know. So at some point on uh, Christmas Day of 1993, he puts a 357 Magnum to his head and ends his life. One of the greatest skaters ever lived. And it's just such a, a tragic scenario to a guy that, I mean, if he had, a lot of those guys waited around, you know, it was like Tony Hawk, you know, it was like, well, let's just see what happens, you know, and then the X Games happened, you know, Tony Hawk's pro skater, that stuff came out, Vert was, you know, revitalized, to coin a better term, and it, it was just off to the races, it just, it just came back, and I could see how those guys back then were going, man, this is hopeless. Because even Tony Hawk said, you know, I don't know, it's just started a family, and I don't know what I was going to do financially. And I would have thought he had squared a lot of money away, or squirreled it away. And Jeff had too, but he, he just thought, you know, the skate park had started falling into disarray, and I don't know if he wanted to spend the money on it or whatever, and he ended up, I, someone took it over. But it's just, uh, it's just one of those tales, man, you know? And they, at the autopsy, they found uh, alcohol and diazepam in his value in his system. So he was obviously taking depressants, which is not necessarily a good thing. Like, even when you're depressed, I mean, it can make you even more depressed, according to doctors and the medical literature. But I just thought I would give a shout out, you know, because today's the 24th and tomorrow would be the 25th, so it would be, yeah, like 30 years since he ended his life. And it's so sad because the guy was so rad. But I just thought I would uh, drop a line, thought about doing another skate video. I thought this would be a good one to do. So, as always, Stick around, and I'll see you later.